5-4 Modeling and Optimization Example 1. Use the strategy. Find two numbers whose sum is 20 and whose product is as large as possible. So let's find two numbers whose sum is 20. So we can have x plus y equals 20. And the product is equal to x times y. Now we want to find out what two numbers makes this product as big as possible. And yet at the same time, the two numbers add up to 20. Well, we want to do the derivative on the product, but I want to eliminate one of these variables. We can do that by subtracting x. We have y equals 20 minus x. And then substituting y with uh, 20 minus x in the product. We have the product now is x times 20 minus x. That's equal to 20x minus x squared. And then the derivative of the product is 20 minus 2x. To find minimums and maximums, we always set the derivative equal to 0. We can add 2x over and then divide by 2. So x equals 10. And if the two numbers add up to 20, then the two numbers are 10 and 10. Now, if it, you are asked to prove or show or justify that you've actually found the maximum, we do what we always do. We set 10 on the number line and we test 9 and 11 in the derivative. Now here's the derivative. If we plug 9 in, we get 20 minus 18. That's positive. So the function is increasing to 10. Then plug in 11, we get 20 minus 22. That's negative. So the function increases to 10 and then decreases to 11, making 10 the maximum. So if you're asked to justify it, you will say 10 is a maximum because derivative changes signs. Well, we should say changes from positive to negative. Inscribing rectangles. A rectangle is to be inscribed under one arch of the sine curve. What is the largest area the rectangle can have and what dimensions give that area? So here's one arch of the sine curve. And here's what sine looks like when we graph it. And this is 0 to pi. So we start at 0 and this goes gets back to the x-axis or sine is 0 at pi. Well, if we pick some arbitrary x value, this distance is x right here, and then the distance from this point to pi is also x. We can now find the length of the rectangle is uh, pi minus 2x. Now this point right here on sine x is that arbitrary x value, and then how do you find the y value? You plug the x into the function. This height is sine of x. The area of this rectangle is the base, which is pi minus 2x, times the height, which is sine of x. The area is equal to pi times sine x minus 2x sine of x. To maximize the area, we're going to take the derivative of the area, which is pi times cosine of x minus first times derivative of second plus the second times the derivative of the first, which we can make, well, maybe negative 2. So this is actually minus 2 sine x. We can't solve this with any algebraic techniques, so let's uh, solve this on the calculator. We'll go to y equals, and we have pi times cosine of x minus 2x cosine of x, and then minus 2 sine of x. And let's graph it. So we graph, and we're looking for when this graph crosses the x-axis, because we would set this equal to 0. But we also want to find out where's the first place where the derivative, and this is the graph of the derivative, changes from positive to negative, because that's where you're going to have a maximum. And it's right here where uh, the graph crosses the x-axis the first time on the positive side. 
So we will calculate a zero, and we'll go to the left side, then we'll go to the right side of the zero, and then we'll back up, and uh, that's our x value right there. So x is equal to 0 0.71046, let's say. The question says, what is the largest area the rectangle can have and what dimensions give that area? Well, this is just the x value. The dimensions are right here. Let's back out of the graph and we'll find out what pi minus 2 times 0 0.71046 is. So this is one of the dimensions. We have 1.721 by, and then we need the sine of x, which is sine of 0 0.71046. Six, and that's equal to 0 0.652, 0 0.652, and then to find the area, we just multiply these two numbers. So we have 1.72067265. The area is 1.122, 1 1.122. 1 Example three, fabricating a box. An open top box is to be made by cutting congruent squares of side length X from the corners of a 20 by 25 inch sheet of tin and bending up the sides. So here's the flat piece of tin and we're cutting out corners that are X by X. Then when we fold up these tabs that we create, we have the height of the box, which is X. How large should the squares be to make the box hold as much as possible? And what is the resulting maximum volume? We have the volume is equal to the height times one of the sides uh, is 25 minus this little piece and that little piece right there. So all the way across would be 25, but then we minus out two x's. We have 25 minus 2x, and then on the other side, we have 20 minus 2x. Over here, this side is 20, and we're minusing out uh, two of the x's. Well, let's multiply everything together. We have x times 500, that's 25 times 20, minus 50x minus 40x, and then plus 4x squared. The volume is equal to 500x minus 90x squared, and then plus 4x to the third. To maximize the volume, we're going to take the derivative, which is 500 minus 180x, and then plus 12x squared. Now to solve this, let's just use the quadratic formula and use our calculator. So let's clear this out. We have 180, let's do the plus, plus the square root of 180 squared minus 4 times uh, 12 times 500. And then we'll divide that by 24 because that's 2 times a. We get 11.319. So x equals 11. That should be 0.319. Well, that doesn't make any sense because if you plug 11.319 into x right here, you're going to get 20 minus 22. That's negative, so we really can't have a negative dimension. So even though mathematically this solution makes sense, in the problem it doesn't make any sense at all. So let's go to entry and entry again and change this to a minus now. Press enter. Then we'll divide by 24. And that's equal to 3.681. 3.681. And that makes more sense because now I will have uh, three positive dimensions. Now, how large should the squares be to make the box hold as much as possible? So the squares should be 3.681, and this is looks like inches, by 3.681 inches. What is the resulting maximum volume? So we need to plug 3.681 into all these x's. The volume equals 3.681 times 25 minus 2 times 3.681 and then times 
20 minus 2 times 3.681. And we get a volume of 820.528 inches cubed. Example 4, designing a can. You have been asked to design a 1 liter oil can shaped like a right circular cylinder. What dimensions will use the least material? The material we use is really the surface area, which is 2 pi r squared, which are the, that's the two circles, one on the top, one on the bottom. And then we have what's called the lateral surface area, or the surfaces on, or the surface on the side, which is 2 pi r h. And uh, we want to eliminate one of these variables. I really don't want to take the derivative implicitly. So we can eliminate h. And it says this is a one liter oil shaped can, which is the same as 1,000 centimeters cubed. It's the same thing. The volume is equal to pi r squared h. And we can get h by itself by dividing by pi r squared. So 1,000 divided by pi r squared. And now we can eliminate this h by replacing it with 1,000 over pi r squared. Now the surface area is equal to 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r and then times 1,000 over pi r squared. There, now the h is gone and we can do the derivative just on r. So the derivative dSA over dr, so the derivative of the surface area with respect to r is 4 pi r plus, well, we can, uh, let, let's eliminate some things. One of the r's cancel, and then the pi's cancel. So we're left with 2,000 over r. And remember, that, that little piece is equal to 2,000 r to the negative 1. So now when we take the derivative, we have negative 2,000. We'll have r to the negative 2, which is really over r squared. We can set this equal to 0. We have 4 pi r minus 2,000 over r squared. We can add the 2,000 over r squared to the other side. We'll have 2,000 over r squared uh, is equal to 4 pi r. We can multiply by r squared and then divide by 4 pi. We'll have r to the third, that's what we get when we multiply by r, divide by 4 pi. Well, 2,000 divided by 4 is 500, and so we'll have 500 over pi. r now is equal to the third root of 500 over pi. Let's find out what that value is. If we go, let's turn the calculator on. We go to math, there is the third root right there. So number four, and we have 500 divided by pi. And we get 5.419, so the r is 5.419. We have to make sure, and that's centimeters, we have to make sure we're answering the question. What dimensions will use the least material? Well, there's one of the dimensions, the radius, and to find the height, we have this little equation right here. We just take 1,000 divided by pi r squared. So I can take 1,000 divided by parentheses, pi times the answer, the answer squared. And now the height is 10.839. Height is equal to 10.839 centimeters. Example 5, maximizing profit. Suppose that r of x equals 9x and c of x equals x to the third minus 6x squared plus 15x, where x represents thousands of units. Is there a production level that maximizes profit? If so, what is it? Profit is equal to the revenue you bring in minus the cost it took to make the product. The profit now is equal to well, the revenue is 9x, and then minus x to the third minus 6x squared plus 15x. And that's equal to negative x to the third 
minus, actually plus 6x squared. And then we have 9x minus 15x is negative 6x. To maximize the profit, we take the derivative. We have negative 3x squared plus 12x minus 6. And we could take a negative 3 out and get x squared minus 4x and then plus 2. We find out we really can't factor this, so let's use the quadratic formula. We have uh, 4. Let's go with plus the square root of 16 minus 4 times 1 times 2. And we get 6.828, and we need to divide that by 2. So we get 3.414. x equals 3.414. And we need the other x value, and we can do that by doing second entry twice. And then we can go over and Instead of plus, we can have a minus, and then we divide by 2, and we get 0 .586. 0 .586. Now we can find out whether we have found minimums or maximums by plugging these into, or plugging them on the uh, x-axis, and then testing the derivative. We have 0 .586, and we have 3.414. These are the values we're looking at, and we can test some values around it. I like 0, I like 1, and I like 4. So let's plug 0 in. We get negative 3 times 2. This function is decreasing to 0.586. When I plug 1 in, I get negative 3 times. Let's see, 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. So then after 0.586, the function increases. Let's plug a 4 in. We get 16 minus 16 plus 2, which is negative 3 times 2, and that is negative. So then the function decreases. We can see we have a maximum at 3.414. So 3.414 thousand units. maximizes the profit.